Hi, Peter here. Uh, tonight, Dawson and I are going to be putting together, uh, or at least starting to put together, a flip chip tester that we uh, talked about in the previous video. And uh, we're going to work on assembling it. We actually have two units. Um, and tonight we're going to work on one. Dawson's going to kind of walk me through some of that stuff as he's a lot more experienced uh, building stuff like this than I am. And I'll probably build the other one uh, in the future. Um, but uh, tonight we're going to kind of see where we're at and uh, figure out how to attack putting this thing together and then um, take some, some videos of our progress. So here are our parts and our uh, parts are here in this bag sewn uh, nicely put together by Vince and the PCB uh, that uh, Vince had made and I love the uh, flip chip tester designed by Warren Stearns and our flip chip sockets and some ICs here and um, so we're going to kind of figure out how to attack this and um, then we'll be back to, to talk about our approach. So uh, we're about to get going. We've been reading the instructions and trying to figure out uh, what our best uh, approach is to get started. And so, Dawson, uh, what are we going to start with here? Uh, well, we're going to start with the uh, DB25 connector um, that'll come right off the board. And it's actually most convenient to put it underneath the board and solder it to the top. Um, but you want to have the cable connected so that you get it at the right angle so you can pull the cable on and off. So we don't uh, solder it in such a way that we can't actually put the cable on. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's where we're going to start. Um, one thing we've been trying to figure out is we're basically building it to run on hardware parallel, and there have been some modifications with the people working on developing this to allow you to run it uh, off USB, say off a Raspberry Pi with a GUI and so on and so forth, uh, but some modifications need to be done in order to do that. Um, so we're just going to build it the way that it is uh, originally built, uh, and then if we have to make the modifications later, if we choose to do that, then we'll do that. So uh, we're going to get started now, and uh, we'll check in in a few minutes. All right, uh, we are back, and what we have done so far is we added the uh, interface cable, uh, or interface connector, rather. Um, Dawson gave me a little quick how-to of soldering. I'm sure uh, my soldering will, will get better as we go here. Um, and then the power uh, connector as well. And I, I did this one, and you can see um, my, my first one is on the left, and it's a little, a little janky looking, and then they got better as, as you went to the right. So um, my, my soldering will certainly improve here. I'm a software guy, really, so... I'm just making a joke. Uh, and then we've got some little nylon feet here to, to space off the, the bottom. And uh, we're, we're looking at what's next. So, uh, Dawson, what do the instructions suggest we do next? Um, they suggest putting on the resistors next and then the non-polarized capacitors. So we have to sort through those and figure out where each one goes. Sure. Okay, but but it's actually starting to, you know, it's like, oh, this this could become a thing with stuff on it that does things, which is cool. So we'll check in a little bit later, and uh, hopefully there will be more stuff soldered onto this board. Of course, uh, what project would be complete without some sustenance? So we're going to order some pizza luce to help us out here, and uh, we'll have to figure out what we what we're looking for here. Apparently it's the best pizza in Minnesota. Oh. Or so they say. <laughs> All right, we're back to check in on uh, our flip chip tester one that Dawson's been working on. Uh, Dawson, uh, what am I looking at? Uh, well, all that's on there now are the resistors. Okay. Um, so those are all soldered in correctly where they should go. And clipped off the backs. Yep. Cool. Then we'll move on to the small uh, capacitors after that. All right. 
cool with our part supplies. It looked so daunting at first and now it's like dwindling. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. And uh, our, our pizza has arrived. So it is break time. More later. All right, uh, where are we at? Uh, well, the bypass capacitors are installed and the rectifier diodes are installed now. Cool. So now we're going to move on to the uh, IC sockets. Great. And do you know what these ICs are? Are they all the same? Uh, these ones are the same. These are 16-bit uh, I.O. expanders for okay. essentially throwing all that data around. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one is a hex inverter. Okay. And then I don't think we have any more, just those. Okay. And then, do you know what these these mm -hmm. headers are for? I don't even know um, if that's the right term for it. Yeah, no, yeah, those are, those will go here. Well, we'll have to clip them down. Yeah. Uh, some of them might fit, actually. But those are for jumper configurations. Oh, right. Warren's, he had the little jumpers to configure and tell it which things you'd be testing. Yeah. Um, I guess I don't remember exactly how he used them, but they all had... He had some specific jumper configurations for things. I see. So conceivably, in a future version, much more complicated, you could remove those jumpers with mm -hmm. additional hardware, basically. Yeah. 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 And future version, Warren wanted a core tester. Oh, cool. So that, that was his... That told me that was the goal that he was working towards eventually was something big enough to put the whole core board hmm. into. Hmm. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Well, stay tuned for more later. All right. So here's Dawson's. Okay. Now, of course, we started Dawson's a little bit earlier, but over here <laughs> is mine. Which one is ma is being put together by an EE major and which one is being put together by a CS person? I think we can tell. Uh, we can tell. So Dawson, tell me, uh, what do we have here? Uh, well, now all of the sockets for the integrated circuits are uh, put on there. And then I also just cut these uh, headers to length so that they'll fit okay. in those sockets. Cool. So solder those on and then the individual pins around there, the switch, and the actual connectors for the flip chip, and it's pretty much ready to go. Cool. Very cool. And then we'll figure out the software side of things and, uh, you know, make sure that, uh, well, we need a machine with a parallel port, and we need, uh, you know, make sure our cable works, and then we can test some chips. Preferably, uh, we'll test some chips that we don't uh, absolutely need. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Something to figure out. Okay, well, uh, we're not quite done. Um, in, in, some, in one case, we're, like, really not done. Um, but we've got a good start, and um, we'll, we'll report back later. All right, thanks. Uh, this is Dawson, and uh, Peter was not able to make it in this afternoon. Uh, but I decided to stop up and uh, finish off the flip chip tester. Um, and as you can see, we now have all of the ICs socketed, uh, the LEDs are added, all of the testing pins are soldered in on the sides, the connectors for the flip chips, and uh, now we also have the uh, after after the fact modifications um, that were suggested to be added uh, to correct some hardware level bugs with this uh, implementation of the PCB. Uh, as of this moment, I am still looking for a 5 volt power supply to run it off of, um, but as soon as we find one, uh, we can get this wired up and uh, testing flip chips. Until next time, uh, see you later.